Last time I used the still 088 chainsaw motor to start building a tie long tail style motor. So straight back into it, here I am milling a slot into the boss that goes to the motor using a 6mm cutter and the dividing head as it won't reach right through. I am taking a 1.5mm cut each time at 1000 rpm and cutting it with an auto feed. There we go, nice. Now I'm cutting a slot in the drive shaft to put in a piece of 5mm plate, TIG welding it, and then grinding it to shape. I use a live centre to centralise the prop and the lathe. Then I drill it out to 12mm to suit the drive shaft. While I'm in here I make some plastic bushings for the drive shaft end of the shaft. Using a drill I mark the drive shaft, then grind a slot to retain the propeller. Demonstrating it here with the drill bit. I 3D print a space as the water flows into the propeller nicely. I cut the skeg from 5mm aluminium plate and tack it onto the shaft. The end of the tungsten falls off, luckily it didn't land on my crock. I give it a preheat with the gas cooker so it welds nicer. I mark the drive shaft to install a roll pin which spins the propeller. I'm looking for a balance point for the main pivot. So you want to be a bit tail heavy, so I take a bit of a guess at where I think it should be. After all of that, somehow this is done. Uh, I've just got some little 3D printed knobs here so I can tighten the shaft up in there. I cut a pipe and weld a 16mm bolt to it and chip the slag. Alright, that's it there. That's going to be the main pivot. Just need some bushes for it. Okay, while the bushes are printing for that, so I've just got this mocked up in sort of the position it's going to be. I'm going to sit about here, so I need to make a handle. It's going to be quite short around here somewhere. Let's build that. Some 20mm OD aluminium pipe with 3mm sidewall will be good for this. I hate the pipe to bend it with my bending tree in small increments as to not deform the pipe. I grind it to shape. My bushes are made, so I put them in. Then I tackle the handle parts together and weld them off. Here we go, that's all put together. This is all aluminium, I've just um, wire wheeled it. So I've got a rubber mount in here. And then that's mounted to the 3D part that I printed in the last video. 
So the handle is sort of rubber mounted a little bit, so to give a bit of shock resistance because these motors vibrate quite a bit. What's next is sorting out the throttles and chokes and stuff. We'll do that tomorrow. I'm making a throttle linkage with 1.6 millimeter stainless steel plate, which I mount to the 3D printed bracket. Drill three holes so I can change the leverage angle and fold it into shape. Then cut a slot for the throttle cable. And just like that, it's sunny again. So I've got that throttle hooked up. That's working pretty good. But I need to make something for the choke to work now. Okay, that's taken me so many goes to get this right. But is the choke fully open, halfway position, and closed. This, took, took, this part took me a few prints to get right because it's got a flexible thingy on the end here. But yeah, looks like it works pretty good now. Nice and simple. All right, another 3D printed part just to keep that bolt retained because I can't get to it once the cover's on. Fingers are now sticking together. And also a grip for the handle was printing too, so I've been a lot of 3D printing tonight. All right, fresh off the printer. Oh, look at that. Another thing I've had to do is since the fuel tank is on actually this part of it, the handle part, I am running fuel in the oil container, which then comes out here to lube the chain and I've just shoved a hose through there rooted it around to the carburetor all right let's put it all back together and see if it all works uh, that shouldn't be spinning like that okay so just from shutting down the motor it snapped off the uh, it split the roll pin sheared it off so that was never going to work so I'll try an M5 uh, cap screw okay I've got the carburetor off now um, there's little bits of dirt everywhere that fuel tank or that oil container years of neglect and getting filled with bits of sawdust and stuff I've rigged up this little fuel tank here and uh, we'll try that all right. Okay, the handle was a little bit loose because it's relying on the 3D print that's holding all of this to the handle. So I put another brace in here, but the whole thing is still rubber mounted because of this bush, so it's quite smooth to hold on to. Bit of tape job on the uh, brake fluid container, aka gas tank, and got the off button installed. <laughs> So that's a five horsepower propeller running one to one at eight, nine thousand revs. I did not think it would have the power to run that, but it seems to do it, no worries. Yeah, man, she flicks some water all right. Okay, I've got the water draining out of the boat. So I've got to set this up now to take this long tail. Charging all my cameras and everything with the uh, EK Flow, which is charging with the sun. Link to this in the description.
Oh no! Doesn't have enough prop. The prop's too aggressive. Yeah, the uh, shear pin broke. Nah, it doesn't. Yeah. It can't. Um, can't yeah, the, 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 prop, the prop's too aggressive for yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, so when I tested it at that tub, the tub was only this deep. Yeah. So when it tries to hook up and go, it's like, nah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's going on here? This is a normal surface drive propeller for a mud motor. This is a normal outboard propeller. And what I think is happening is when I'm holding it shallow on the water, it just cavitates. Whereas this one just really hooks up. And the other problem I've got is outboard propellers, there's a backwards to these ones. So I might have to hand make one of these ones this size backwards. So let's see if that works in the next episode. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.